CJ Stroud threw three interceptions in the Texans 21-16 win over the Cardinals. And I loved what he said after the game. Did any of you guys catch his quote? He said, man, Steph Curry, don't ever stop oh, shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I yes, thought yes, that yes, was yes, great. He said, I'm, great. I'm going to keep letting it ride. I've got no shame in my game. I'm definitely got, I've definitely got to be smarter. No confidence is taken away. I'm going to keep letting it fly. He did become the fourth. Uh, it was his fourth game with 300-plus passing yards and two-plus passing touchdowns, which is tied for third most in NFL history for a rookie behind Herbert and Andrew Luck. And, man, you forget how good Andrew Luck was for just a short period of time. Stroud is now fourth place for most passing yards in a player's first 10 career games, only behind one Mahomes, two Herbert, and three Andrew Luck. So we're seeing historical stuff still from Stroud right now. And, Ziggy, where does that lead us on your first Ziggur Zag take? Going into the most important game of the season for the Texans, here's the first take. Are you zigging or are you zagging? I think C.J. Stroud should be an MVP front runner. I don't necessarily mean having the best odds, but he should be right up there with Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and Tua. Right, right now he's in the tier two of like Purdy, Prescott, those kinds of guys. C.J. Stroud should be up there with the top ones. So right now it's Tua, Lamar, uh, Holmes, Hertz, and Hertz. Holmes. Those are the four. I think Stroud is the fifth best odds, right behind those guys. Yeah, but he's like so. Like you're talking like plus three hundred, plus four fifty. Different sports books go back and forth on those guys. Then you drop down to like plus eighteen hundred, plus two thousand. There's a huge drop off there. And like, look, here's why. I'll, I'll give you the case. You tell me if you're zigging or zagging. This is a historically weak year for quarterbacks at the MVP position. Right, all the guys they are front runners: Tua, Lamar Jackson, Mahomes, Hurts. All of them have their own problems. All of them have their own narrative failures. People are looking for something different. Well, it's not going to be a non-wide receiver or a non-quarterback. Right, a wide receiver ain't winning it. A running back ain't winning it. What is different? A rookie quarterback that elevates his team. He's not just the quarterback on the best team in the NFL. It's a guy who's able to take a team that's been downtrodden for the past few years throw five passing touchdowns in a game and elevate them to winning the division in a playoff spot when they had the second lowest win total at the start of the year. I, I'm completely zigging oh, on yeah, this. I'm zigging 100%. I, yeah. I don't think anyone outside of Lamar should even be higher than Stroud right now. And that could sound a little crazy, but Stroud is the weakest defense of the four or of the five guys. Probably the weakest overall offense, depending on how you want to view the Ravens. And yeah, to be where they are, the Texans right now, it's in, insane. And, and and really, I would have him above Tua. No offense, Zach. I'd have him above Tua for sure. Yeah, look what he's done. I mean, this Texas it's team insane. was in shambles. I said they were going three and, 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 and 14 or four and 13. And he has Noah Brown and Tank Dell and Dalton Schultz. And they're looking like superstars. And he's got them all on their back. And they look impressive. They're, they can win the division. Yeah, Zig, of course. It's what's sort of crazy about Houston too. It's just having a rookie coach as well on this. It's been an unbelievable stretch of games here for them. I, I, I'm completely zigging. I think he should be number two in the MVP race right now. And I hope that him being a rookie isn't the reason that we're seeing him lacking in the odds. And I, I think that is why we are. It probably, I, I, it's, it's probably him and, and the team he plays on. They probably figured at some point they're going to tail off. And I think some of it's got to be body of work too. Like, don't like you talk about him being a rookie and fair enough. I think the issue is just CJ Stroud has had a few really good games recently. He's gotten hot. It's gotten us a lot of views and that's been good. But the first half of the season, really up until that Buccaneers game, it was okay. He was playing well, but he wasn't playing anything like an MVP level. He threw four interceptions in the past two games. There's certainly some hype train some going here, but if he it, keeps yes. playing like this, it's going to be tough to resist the boat. Okay, so we both zig on the first one. What's take This two? one you might be zagging on. This one's going to be a little bit more controversial. This time we're going to New York, the New York Jets. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be here, saying something here. I did not think that I would be saying, but here it goes. I think that the Jets have failed Zach Wilson more than Zach Wilson has failed the Jets. Now, I get that that sounds tough, Right. Zach Wilson's gotten a whole lot of opportunities. He's gotten, frankly, more chances than you would on almost any other NFL team. And he hasn't looked great. But look at what he's had to work with. The man's getting pressured one in every three, one in every two dropbacks. You put Tim Boyle in. The wide receivers can't get an inch of separation. The run game's a disaster. The defense, 
They play really good in the second half, but it takes them a quarter and a half to get going every single game. Zach Wilson can't get good offensive coaching, right? They brought in Hackett just as a scheme to lure in Rodgers. So even though Zach Wilson hasn't looked great, absolutely nothing in New York has been working for him. And frankly, the Jets have let him down more than he's let down the Jets. I'm going to zag. I'm I'm going to zag on this one. He's Zach Wilson has been basically unplayable throughout most of this year. The way I look at it, Ziggy, is we just talked about CJ Stroud and how they're playing with backup offensive linemen, receivers going into the year that no one really knew. And look at what they're doing. I and look at Josh Dobbs and the Vikings. The Vi- the, you know the Vikings are, don't have Jefferson. He comes in. I know we have better playmakers than the Jets, mostly. But still, Zach Wilson has given you almost nothing, and he is not only he, he is losing games at this point because the defense is so good. They're putting the Jets in a position to win every week. They need to score twenty points, and they can't do that. The Jets have failed Zach Wilson, but he has been really, really bad. Yeah, I don't hate the take, but. I'm going to Zach as well. I mean, he has one of the best receivers in the game in Garrett Wilson, one of the best defenses in the game. And we've seen too many times Zach Wilson seems to be making that big mistake at the end and they lose the game. Like the Raiders, for example. The Chiefs example. game, too. Like, he dropped yeah, the snap. Yeah, yeah. It, Chiefs game, Raiders game throws a late pick. I'm just a little I'm fed up with him. I just say Garrett Wilson is much more hype than he is substance. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I think he's definitely one of the better wide receivers in the league. But people talk about this guy like he's Devontae Adams and an alpha dog. He does not play like that. He plays like that, an above average wide Wilson receiver. Play that Zach Wilson. No, watch him get separation. You can't because he usually doesn't get it. And even if he were good, right? Let's imagine he's the best wide receiver in the league. You got Alan Lazard, Xavier Gibson, Tyler Conklin, and the ghost of Mekhi Becton out there trying to make plays. <laughs> It's not happening. Yeah, okay. Look, I'm not going to argue that the Jets haven't haven't done poorly themselves, but yeah, I would lean Zach Wilson over. And what's your third take? Sticking with the AFC for this one, we're going down to Florida. We're not talking about the Miami Dolphins because they're not the team to watch for in Florida. Everyone Ooh. sort of knows what you're getting with the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to say this. After this week, I think the haters have been silenced. The Jaguars have shown themselves to be a genuine contender in the AFC. They've got one of the better defenses. I get that they've had a tough game against the 49ers, but everyone struggled against the 49ers. They locked down the Bills. They played well against the Saints, the Steelers, the Chiefs. Makes a good and bad offense there, but the defense has generally played, played pretty well. Meanwhile, the offense, again, despite a bad game against the 49ers, has looked good pretty much all season. Trevor Lawrence gets better every single week. They're finally starting to find a balance among the receiving options. Every week, either Calvin Ridley or Christian Kirk or Travis Etienne's winning someone a fantasy league. So when you combine a growing offense with a functional defense and a pretty easy division, I think the Jaguars are a team to watch in the AFC. And more than that, they're a sleeper contender for the one seed. Are they? Uh, does that mean that they're on the same tier to you as... Like Kansas City. Chiefs, Ravens, Dolphins. Here is the, here is what I think. The f- absolute floor for the Jaguars should be a playoff win. The expectation should be a run to the championship rounds. I'm going to uh I'm going to Zag. I think this Jags team is is very solid. But I say that mostly because I believe Houston wins the AFC South and the Jags have to go on the road the entire postseason. And last week I said that. Their game against San Francisco, to me, kind of show what a Super Bowl team looks like versus what an above-average team looks like when they got totally exposed and marked. Trevor Lawrence, to me, and this Jags team as a whole, a little bit too inconsistent and hard to trust. They vary week by week. Good team, but I'm going to zag on the AFC contender. Ziggy, I have an interesting breakdown of, of what you just said. I'm going to agree with you that the floor should be the divisional round. Because I do think that they they control their destiny to get to that that division win. They should be you know go beat the Texans next week. Do that. That should be your floor. The expectation is you should take down C.J. Stroud. But um, and then when you look at the wild card teams too, between the Browns, Steelers, Buffalo would scare me if they get in, but that's going to be shaky. You should expect to win a first round game. I'm going to zag. I don't think they're on the same level as the Dolphins, Ravens, or Chiefs. I, in, in one of those playoff games, I'd I'd be surprised if they won that. So 
I do think they're very good, but not on that level for me yet. So going to Zag, but I think that's a pretty good take to have I mean, as well. I, I think there is a world where you can say that the third best team in the AFC behind the Chiefs and the Ravens. And so, and it's tough because you could kind of say, you know, if they're in the divisional round, I guess they are legitimate contender. Like if you're, if you're playing in the final four teams in your conference, you're a legitimate contender. Um, I just don't expect them to win that game. That's kind of what I'm all, saying. Too. All I'm saying is you're talking about the Dolphins. At least the Jaguars have beaten the team over 500. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could say the Jags are better than the Dolphins. Yeah. yeah right. You know what? Maybe, maybe oh, they, they beat a team over 500, into. Zach, on the road. I, I don't. Maybe, maybe maybe he's talked us into saying yeah. Like if you're a top three contender in your conference, I don't, you know, the, exactly, I don't yeah. see him like winning in Baltimore, or Kansas City. You know that's you, that's but, what. Yeah, look, me neither. I'll tell you how you beat the Jaguars. You now you beat the Jaguars. You shut down Calvin Ridley. Well, what happens? What happens if you have Baltimore going to Jacksonville? Baltimore. I don't think Baltimore runs them out of the building. Well, that's totally different. But but that could happen if they beat. No, if you get home field advantage, you're winning that game. Oh, so, okay. so then they're a legitimate contender. Then you are. Yeah, look, if, if, if we think the difference between the Jaguars and the Ravens is home field advantage, that is a contender, right? Yeah, there. I don't think the difference between the Chiefs and the Jaguars. So I think the Chiefs win that game no matter no, where. I just it is. think any team that has home field that, advantage has a way better chance of winning. This man, this doesn't. man is coping so hard with the fact the Dolphins can't win on the road. So he's assuming that home field advantage is worth like thirty points. I mean, I, first of all, I'll just put it out there: the Dolphins are like seventeen and two at home in the last nineteen games. Cool. Dolphin, Dolphins Dolphin. or Jags, neutral field. Who do you have? I, the, you're probably the Dolphins. Yeah, Dolphins. But I think I'd still take Baltimore on the road against Jacksonville in the playoffs. Okay. So I'm closer to zigging than you are. Yeah. All right. 